morning. Steve and I would like to welcome you to day two of Life Unleashed. And happy Valentine's Day out there to all of you. Each and every one of you deserves to have, you know, something light up your heart today. And if you have to buy yourself flowers, like Miley Cyrus tells us, we can always buy ourselves flowers. So today we are going to be talking about decision. But before we even start that, if you weren't with us for day one, fear not. Um, day two's lesson on decision can stand all alone, all by itself. But I'm going to start off with a recap of day one. Life Unleashed. Learning to break the chain, learning to live off the chain. What does that mean to you? Do you ever feel stuck, like you're stuck in a rut? Or your life has just become routine and you just want to make changes? You just have this niggling feeling from inside that you want something to be different. You're not alone in that. That's basically life itself telling you it wants something more. Something more can come through you. You can have more. It's okay. A lot of times as we grow up, you know, we hear it's not good to want more, right? You should be happy with what you have. And there's nothing wrong with being happy with what you have and wanting more. It shouldn't be an either or. It should be a both and, Always be striving, always be growing. That's what life is about. That's what we want to bring forth. And yesterday, Steve talked all about goals and what goals are for in your life. Goals are for growth. They're not for getting. It's a journey that we take on life. But with life, with our own life, we have to tell it where to go. Without telling your life where to go, it's like having a sailboat and don't plug in a destination, right? To a sailboat without a destination, there is no favorable wind. It just gets tossed and turned by the waves of whatever conditions are out there. And who knows where it'll end up? Your, your life is kind of the same way. You have to know where you're going or you're never going to get there. It's like taking a trip, right? Right. And you, you leave your driveway and you say, I'm going west. And you keep going west. The problem is you're never going to get there. You're just going to keep going and going and going because west goes on forever. So goals are for personal growth, growing ourselves, and setting a destination, knowing where we're going. And the joy is actually not in getting to that destination but who you become in the process. You as a person change to get to that destination. And Steve talked about different kinds of goals yesterday. You know, the A goals, something we already know how to do and we, we just have to do it again and we may be putting it off and procrastinating, but there's no growth in anything like that. He talked about buying a car. And B goals, that kind of intermediate goal, is if everything comes together, if my job does the part, if I get the vacation and the time off, if the kids, you know, don't have anything going on, if I get that raise, then maybe that B goal, be it a new car, a house, a vacation, maybe we can make that happen. But the problem is there's really no inspiration in that because it's based on everything else happening. And then when it doesn't happen, there's really no responsibility for you because you really didn't have a lot of skin in the game. It was their fault it didn't happen. It's their, you know, my boss, my job, my kids didn't get the time off, not high enough on the seniority ranking, right? It's something else outside of you. And you're just kind of like, yeah, I really wasn't expecting it anyhow. And there's no inspiration. And you just kind of lose sight of the goal until the next one comes along. Your C-type goal that Steve referred to, that C-type, that fantasy, that imagination. You know, think of children when they're, when they're sitting there and designing something just perfect for themselves. They build castles and they build just extravagant things. What is that extravagant thing for you? 
if I gave you Tinkerbell's magic wand, remember, we're from Orlando. And I said, if you could have your life be anything that you want, if you pr could bring anything into your life, what would that life look like? Everything aside, don't look at anything in current conditions. If you could build that fantasy, what would it look like? And then we start from there. We start growing and we start making changes and decisions based off that life, based on getting there. And I don't know what that looks like you for you. That could be a house in the country with a white picket fence, with dogs and children running in the yard. That could be a chalet in the mountains or a house on the beach or that house on the beach and sharing it with someone, that person that you love that you just haven't found yet, that perfect relationship. That could be having that perfect job where you get to serve others and just do whatever lights up your heart. That could be having the time and money to take those vacations and spend time with family or do philanthropic work that sets you on fire, right? That lights you up. So that C-type goal is different for each and every one of us. And that's okay. And it should be. It's whatever would set your heart on fire and make you get up in the morning just passionate to get out of bed because you want to stay on that path. You want to be there making your way to get to that goal. You see, as Steve told us, many of us, let others control where we're going in life, our goals. They kind of dampen our spirits and put limits on what we can achieve. And we have to remember, we, you and I, are the leading actors of our life. We are also the producers. We are the directors. Our life, our movie. You know what? If you don't like what's happening right now, if I don't like it, edit, rewrite the script. It's yours to write. It's not mine to write for you. No, it is yours to write. So that's where we start today. And that's where we left off yesterday. Having that goal that propel, will propel you forward. And no, you're not going to get it tomorrow but you start taking small steps. And in six months, you're in a whole different place. And in a year, wow. You know, you're just going to be someone, a different person, a different place. You need a, need a telescope to see where you started. And that's the truth. So we start today. And with that, I wanna pass it over to Steve because it all starts with a decision. A decision to say, I'm important, my life is important, and this is where I want to take it from this day forward. And he's going to start with telling us how important making a decision can be for our future selves. With that, Steve, it's all yours. All right. Well, thank you. And happy Valentine's Day, Susan, my wife, my love, and to everybody else out there. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and if I can get a thumbs up that you see everything clear, perfect. You know, so we did talk yesterday about several things. We talked about your self-talk. We talked about goal setting and the importance of goals and what the purpose of them is, and it's to help us grow. It's not to get more. It's not to have more. And we touched on why companies have goals. Companies want to grow. So goals are for growth. And that's the first thing we have to understand. And we correlated yesterday how that internal self-talk has to match your goal. You can't have a goal yet have negative inner self-talk. And today I want to talk about really three different things that impact all of those things we discussed yesterday. And one of them is comfort zone and getting out of your comfort zone. You are not going to make a massive quantum leap in your life by staying where you're at, by the conformity of doing whatever you've always done. Your results will never change. They'll always stay the same. 
And most likely you'll always be frustrated that your goals aren't being achieved. So I'm going to talk about comfort zone. I'm going to talk about making decisions and the importance of it and how you go about making those decisions and where procrastination steps in and hinders you. You see, results tell us everything. Whatever your current results are happening right now tells us how well you know things, tells us how things are happening in your life. It also is a barometer for you to look at how am I progressing towards whatever goal I've set, if you've set one. If you've set a goal and you're just meandering along, getting the same results, things need to change. You see, there's a limitless life waiting for you to come out. It's just waiting for you to rip the lid off. And as soon as you rip that lid off, the abundance and the possibilities are endless. But see, people live in two different versions of their world. They live either on fear, their fear of where they're going, their fear they're going to come up short. They have a fear of failure. And that's a very strong emotion that people have. And then there are those that live in faith. They trust. They believe. They know that I can attain my goals. And they also understand that there are failures along the way, but failure only happens when you quit. So as long as you get up and keep going, you don't fail. You see, in the house you live in, faith and fear both live there with you. They're just each in different rooms. And so I'd ask you, which room do you visit? Do you visit the room of fear and limit yourself to your growth? Or do you live in the room of faith and you move forward and nothing stops you? You see, the work in attaining your goals and overcoming your old self, your old fears, your old beliefs, and, and we're trying to create a better version of ourselves. Your mind is like a garden. You're planting seeds every year, and you're wanting them to grow and prosper. But the question is, are you planting a garden of abundance, or are you planting a garden of scarcity? That's a choice that you have. You see, so many people fear discomfort in making decisions. They're terrified. They know where they're at. They know how they feel. It's comfortable. And the fear of stepping out of that circle, it scares them. It scares them so much that it paralyzes them. They don't even make a decision. Therefore, they don't move anywhere. They'd rather wait for a miracle to occur rather than going after what they want. But that's just not how it happens. If you want something, you've got to set that intention and that goal in motion but you have to be prepared to step out of that comfort zone and do some things differently that are going to move you in the direction of your goal. If you want your dreams to come true, the answer is simple. You have to set the intention and you have to get moving. You have to get out of your comfort zones first because your life is full of opportunities once you've stepped outside that comfort zone. What holds most people back is the frame of their mind that they lack knowledge. I don't have an understanding. I'm not sure how to go about it. But once you've set a goal and you start moving towards it, you're going to find your way. Things are going to begin to fall into place. And that's part of the decision process we're going to talk about. You have to have the courage to act. Only by action can goals and decisions become translated into reality. You also have to be willing to make those mistakes. You have to be willing to step back and realize what did work or what doesn't work and find a new path around it. Remember yesterday when I mentioned Napoleon's famous quote, all I see is my objective, all obstacles must give way. It's a mentality we need to adopt. All I see is my goal. Whatever barriers might come into my way, they have to give way because I'm going to push through them. When you go after what you want, when you take an active role, you set into motion learning things about yourself unlike ever before. It's not always easy. Again, fear can paralyze and stop your progress. We have to push through that. Life isn't predictable. You might step out. You might look to take control of what you desire, and some event in life happens. We work around it. We don't allow the, le the life lessons to stop and stop learning them because something got in our way. That's something to be expected. But once you leave your comfort zone, you're going to experience a period of trial and error, and it's a must for your success. Real life is out there beyond the bubble over your own thoughts and fears. There are things happening out there that we don't experience because we stay in a box. We stay in a little defined area that keeps us in that comfort zone. Stepping out pushes you to new heights, new strengths. You untap potential in you that you never knew you had. Eleanor Roosevelt 
once said, do something that makes you uncomfortable every day and grow. Do something that makes you uncomfortable every day. I can guarantee you, if you're doing things and your progress to your goals and whatever your aspirations are, and you're doing something every day that makes you a little uncomfortable, that's a good thing. That's a sign that you're making progress on the journey towards your goal. Taking those risks grows us. Even if you make that mistake, there's no such thing as failure. Because if you learn from a mistake, that's not failure, that's growth. So don't stay comfortable. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't allow the norm to be the norm. Life is about change. Think about your life. You had a whole different group of friends in elementary school than you probably had in middle school and in high school. And as you progressed through life and had family and kids and you moved different neighborhoods, you had a different set of friends. Life is about change. Growing ourselves, getting better, that's all about change. Embrace that change. Embrace the uncomfortable challenges that go along with that. You'll continually move forward to the next level of your journey if you take that growth. But there is a single move you can make right now. There's something you can do today that will resolve enormous problems for you that'll also set you on the pathway to your goal. It's a magical mental activity that I can share with you that's going to lead you to enormous success. And what's that magic activity? It's called making a decision. Lack of decision is the head of the list of the 30 major causes of people's failures in life. Their lack of making a decision. You look at your multi-million dollar earners, the people that are making fast and definite decisions, that is the number one reason for their success. You talk to any leader, any corporate executive, anybody that has built a great empire of wealth or relationships, they'll tell you the greatest thing that I've done is I've made decisions and I've moved on them. I acted on them immediately. Those are your six and seven and eight plus wage earners are those people that take the time to step back, assess a situation, but make a quick decision. It helped me in my life. As a manager, I can guarantee you over all the years and I got to the level of a corporate president, you had to make decisions and not everybody's gonna agree with them. It's just like politics. You got Republicans and Democrats and one side doesn't agree with the other. But the reality is, as a leader, you have to make a decision. You have to go with your conviction. You go with what you know is right and you act on it. If you stop to take a poll and to listen to all the naysayers, and in our lives, if we stopped and asked every friend and every family member for an opinion, we'd never make a decision. I had a very dear friend that's no longer with us, and he was one of the greatest and most gregarious people you would ever meet. But he never made a decision without asking everybody for their opinion. And I'm not, I'm not kidding when I say this. If he had a simple decision and it was either A or B, he'd ask 100 people for their thoughts. And if 99 people said it's A, but the 100th person, that one person went, eh, A or B, I could go either way. He was totally confused. He could not make a decision. And it's just a part of how some people are. And you have to be able to step up and make those decisions. Your income, possessions you have, your relationships, your whole life is affected by the decisions you make. Careers are affected by it in corporate world. But this morning, think about when you got up. You probably haven't even stopped to realize all the decisions you've made up to this point today, if you look at the time on your watch. You decided what to wear. You decided how to shower. You decided what route to take to work. You decided where you're going to interact with and who you're going to talk to. You decided on some decisions that had to happen in the office. You decided what to eat for breakfast. You're probably deciding what to have for lunch. You're deciding what to do on Valentine's Day when you get home to your significant other. You're making decisions all the time. Some of them come natural. They're quite obvious. But the harder ones, the ones you got to really put your mind to, the ones that are going to lead you towards your goal, that are going to change the course of your life, those are the ones people tend to sit back and freeze. And they're afraid to make the decision. But deep down, you know what you want. You know what you want. You've committed to it once, so why quit? Why not move forward? The question becomes, is today one day in your life or is today day one of you moving forward towards your goal? 
you know, personally, those are the lessons I learned in business was don't vacillate, do it now, make a decision, don't be influenced by others' opinion and move on it. And I, I'm proud to say I always had top performing teams. I always had one of the best teams. Our team was always the go-to to say, hey, if you want to see something that's being done right, call this team. They know how to do it. And that's a byproduct of that. We made decisions. I made decisions for the team and we acted on it. We didn't sit back and, and worry. We just moved forward. You know, and that's where people begin to procrastinate. And I would ask you, are you one of those people? Do you decide in your mind, I'm going to do something? Then a day goes by, two days, four days. Pretty soon you're saying things to yourself like, oh, I'll start tomorrow. I'll start Monday. You know, it's already Wednesday and eh, the week's half over. So I'm going to hit it first thing on Monday and get going. Or you start saying things like, on a broader decision, well, maybe when I get a new job and make more money, maybe when I lose weight, maybe when the kids graduate from school, and it becomes when I, when I, when I, and procrastination has become your crutch. It's, even, it's like a disease. It's in you, and you're kidding yourself that you're going to move forward, but you never will because your procrastination, your delay in making decisions is holding you back. Decision is so important, and it's not even taught in schools. Think about that. Making decisions, learning how to make decisions, being strong in making decisions, we don't teach it in school. We don't teach kids at any level from grade school through college the importance of making decisions, how to make decisions. It's left, left up to us to decide. Some people have parents that were great at making decisions, and they learned from that, and others have those that we're fearful and apathetic, and they learn from that as well. So if it's not taught, how do you learn? It's easier than you may think. It takes some practice. It takes confidence. It takes the word I talked about yesterday, repetition. But what you do is you make a decision. You know in your heart what the right way is that you want to go. So act on it, and then act immediately. You do it on your own. You do it right away. It's not difficult. You get the facts need. You make a decision. I used to tell my employees for the last 35 years as a manager, you're going to make 100 decisions every day at the office. 100. 98 of them are going to be spot on. That's the right decision. One, eh, it could have gone either way. It's not a big deal. One decision you make, we probably should have done the opposite. But guess what? You're not bankrupting the company. You're not creating some kind of a landslide that's going to bring us down. We realize that it's there's another option, another way to go. We change course. You see, that's the beauty of life. You can make a mistake, but you can also adjust for it and move forward. So we do. So I told my people, you are empowered. Make the decision. I trust you. Move forward. And I want to tell you that for yourself in your life today. Make the decision. I trust you. And then act on it and move forward. The results will be outstanding. It'll bring order into your life. It'll bring confidence into your life. But if you fail to do so, you're going to be doomed. This is a version I have for you. I want to see all of you. I am absolutely passionate about this. It's why we do what we do. I want to see everybody I encounter reach their goals, reach their potential, reach the opportunity to see what they can become to dispel the thoughts they have that I'm not good enough or I can't or I'm not educated enough or I'm not rich enough, I'm too young, I'm too old. No, none of that is true. It's only true if you allow it to permeate your thoughts and you believe it. But it's not true. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter. You make the decisions, you're going to celebrate success. But you got to start now. Even if you get off to a slow start, start. Don't put yourself down. Celebrate. Celebrate the beginning. You can start writing a new chapter in your life today going forward. And I hear from people when I talk to them and say things like, well, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've had to deal with. Again, the past is the past. Whatever you have dealt with, we stop. We start rewriting a new life chapter today. We throw the past to the universe and we let that get smaller and smaller and smaller in the rearview rear mirror as we move forward in life. 
Now you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but what if I fail again? What if I start and I fail again? You know, I always stop. I just know that at some point I'm going to do this and then I'm going to stop. How do I move on this time? How do I make this time the success? So I am celebrating success. There are some steps you must take to change your story. We let go of the past. We stop now and we follow the following steps moving forward. You see, the first thing I want you to ask yourself is make a decision on whatever the decision is, decide and say, what price do I have to pay for this? And in most cases, there is none. Am I willing to move forward and do this to achieve my goal? Yeah. As I mentioned yesterday, am I willing? Am I able? Yeah. Then tattoo this on the front of your brain. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Don't make a decision and put it off that I'll start with that tomorrow. Do it immediately. The empowerment you're going to feel and the pride you're going to feel in yourself for stepping up and doing it is going to be amazing. If your first impulse is, I'll start tomorrow, you've sunk again. Today is your masterpiece. Make the decision and move on it today. Just because you didn't do it the last time, just because you didn't do it the last hundred times or thousands of times, does not mean that this time you make the decision to move forward. It takes an intense hunger to reach your goals. And when your want is big enough and that intense desire is burning inside you, guess what happens? The way begins to reveal itself. Remember I talked about frequencies and frequencies, we're all connected. But if you're on a low frequency today getting low results and your goal is on a very high frequency and you're trying to get to that frequency, that's where that intense desire comes in. And as you set that goal and you start taking the steps towards it and you start doing the steps that I shared with you yesterday, you begin to move frequency by frequency until you are on the frequency of your goal and your goal reveals itself to you. As Susan said earlier, we talk about a C-type goal, the fantasy goal. When you set it, your first thought is, I don't know how I'm going to get there. If someone asks you, what's your goal? It's this. How are you going to get there? I don't know. That's what I'm going to do. Like Napoleon, I'm going to hit my objective. And the obstacles are going to give way. As you set the intention and make the decision, you're going to start moving towards it, and it's going to reveal itself. Remember faith or fear. Which room do you want to live in? Set the goal and attain it. Without setting goals, you know it's like living in a prison. You're sitting inside this these bars looking out, and you see what you want but you're afraid to step out of the comfort zone. You're afraid to make the decision. So you stay in your own personal prison going nowhere. Nothing changes. Nothing evolves. Your creative imagination goes stagnant. Frustration sets in. In some cases, depression sets in. But you can change all that. There is infinite potential inside of you. And you know when you say that, people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am telling everyone there is infinite potential potential inside of you there is nothing and no one that can put a box around you as to what you can accomplish or can't except yourself no one can tell you how far you can go they don't know we ourselves don't even realize how far we can go but don't let somebody put a box around you don't let somebody dictate to you what your limits are the only limits we have are what's right in our own mind Those are the limits that we have. Don't let people do that. Don't listen to the musings of others and the people that tell you what you can or can't do, what you should or shouldn't do. Have conviction. Know your goal. Make the decisions for it. Have that positive inner self-talk. Do the things we talked about yesterday in repetitious order, and you'll begin to move towards your goal, and you move up that frequency ladder towards your goal. The only opinion that matters is the opinion you have in your own mind of yourself. You see, your spiritual DNA is perfect, requires no modifications, requires no improvement. Your spiritual DNA is all-knowing, it's all-powerful, it's ever-present, it's the real you. And your goals are here and there to take you where you want to go. You must have the courage to open the door, the courage to step out of that comfort zone into positive change. Big things are coming for you. You just have to believe it. 
So many people, because they haven't experienced great things in the past, feel like I'm cursed. I'm just have bad luck. It won't happen for me. It will. At any time, we can change the course of direction on a dime. At any time, we can move in a new path. Nothing is here to stop you. Your past is just a story. It's a story of what happened and good, bad, or otherwise, it is what it is. So let's rewrite that new story. Let's be fearless about moving forward and not allowing ourselves to sit back. Everything you do, every decision you make is an investment in your future and in yourself. Think about that. Every decision you make. There's an old song by a group that I like, Rush. It's a song called Free Will. And in the song they say, even if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. It's kind of profound words for a, a lyrics to a rock song, but it's true. If you choose not to decide, you still made a choice. You've chosen to do nothing. You've chosen to stay stagnant and stay where you're at. So every decision you make, whatever it is, is an investment in your future. What you do now is going to pro propel you forward or hold you back. So be fearless. If you're not making decisions regularly or you're just merely existing, you're allowing others to decide things for you. How many people, and I know this is true across the spectrum, come home from work and grumble about the decisions their boss has made or the direction of the company or in your own life, you grumble about something your um, significant other may have done or may not have done. You're upset that they do things a certain way or you're upset they don't do things at all. I mean, we all question others' decisions. Our job is to make our own decisions and to act on them and not to let others decide for us. There's a basic universal law that says create or disintegrate. Indecision causes disintegration. You're not growing. You're not creating. You're just existing. People who struggle to make decisions, they let life run them rather than running their own life. And that's a sad reality. Live your life. Lead your life. If you want to do things, if you want to live somewhere, you want to purchase something, you want to travel, you want to career advancement, you want greater wealth, you want financial freedom. I could go on and on and on. Every one of those thoughts and ideas is available to you. You have to act on it. So let's go back to results. Look at your current results, the results you're getting. Are you happy? If not, how are you making decisions about that? Are you making decisions? If you are, but you're not moving, are your decisions really purposeful? Are they really definite or are you actually wavering and vacillating on making a decision? Nothing will elevate your life. Nothing will elevate your results more than making a firm decision and moving forward. You see, the universe, it wants us to have everything. It truly does. But it's our job to tap into it. It's our job to get on the frequency of the goals we have. It's our job to make the decisions and progress forward in life, get out of our comfort zone, and do what Eleanor Roosevelt said. Do something uncomfortable every day. And by doing so, you're going to move in the direction of your goals. If your thoughts are, well, you know, when this happens, then I'll do this. And if that happens, then I'll make that decision. Oh, I'll wait for this to occur, and then I'll decide. You're being delusional. That's not going to get you anywhere. As the, as the um, picture here says, is today one day? Or is today day one? You decide. We talked about goals yesterday. Goals are good for the soul because you're going after what you really want. You're making the decision to say, this is something that I want to do. I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to make decisions. I'm going to have to get out of my comfort zone. I am going to have to do things in a certain way, but I am able, I am willing, I am to doing it, and I'm going to see it through, and I'm going to obtain my objective. I'm going to hit my goal. There's nothing holding you back. There's nothing that says you need to leave, lead a life that's mediocre or subpar or in envy of what others do or have. You can be that same person. You just don't know it yet. But when you start making decisions and moving towards it, it'll start to become clearer and clearer to you. Keep on going. And if you do something that doesn't work, great. We learn something. 
there's an old story of Thomas Edison who in, developed the incandescent light bulb. And he tried over 10,000 times to build the incandescent light bulb. We walk into a room now, we flip switches, we turn on lamps, we don't even give the second thought. We don't even think about what in it went into making that what seems like a very simple light. But he had 10,000 times it didn't work. And someone once asked Thomas Edison, you know, what about those 10,000 failures in building the incandescent light? And his answer was, I never fail. I had 10,000 ways and 10,000 bits of feedback that showed me what didn't work. And then he found a way to make it work. You see, he had a goal and he had a plan and he was going to work towards it. And he wasn't going to let obstacles get in the way. You know, so I ask you about your goal. You have to have a big why. Whatever your goal is, there's got to be a big why. Why do you want this? Not telling others, but in your own mind. Why do I want this? Why do I need it? Why Your why has to be so much stronger than a why not. Jim Carrey, when he was living out of his car and he was a struggling actor, comedian, trying to find his way. And many of you have heard the story. He wrote himself a check. That's going back a few years, but he wrote himself a check. For $10 million, he carried it in his wallet. It was like his goal card. He looked at it all the time, and he put that in his wallet, and he was going to carry it with him until the day that he could cash that check to himself for $10 million. And as he progressed through comedy clubs and got into TV with the show In Living Color, as he progressed on into movies, Ace Ventura, and then many that we all know, he was able to write himself that check for $10 million. He put that goal out there. He put that intention out there, and he began to make decisions and do whatever it took to reach that goal. And he came from humble beginnings. He went all the way to being one of the biggest megastars and highest paid actors or act actresses in the world, one of the most well-known people in the world. He developed his will. You need to develop your will. There's an old saying of do what you can with what you have where you're at. Some people feel like, well, I have to have all these things in place first. No, 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 no. Let's cancel that thinking right now. Do what you can with what you have today, wherever you're at, and start moving forward. All the pieces that need to come and the resources you need, they'll find their way towards you. They do every time. This changed my life. I changed my career from a corporate career to the passion of doing this for others. And along the way, as we've built a business, things have come along that we needed. And when the right time was there, they came. It happens. You see, decision makers are great thinkers. They're great achievers. You are what you think about. So what do you think about all day long? And you may say, well, I'm not a great thinker. I'm not a great achiever. You are. You just don't know it yet. And we need you to start thinking for yourself of what you want. Make the decision, move forward on it. You're going to reach new heights. Nothing's going to pull you back, but nothing happens until you make a decision. Some people fall back on the circumstances. Well, you know, I would love to pursue this goal, but I can't because there's that procrastination again. There's that self-doubt. There's that negative inner self-talk coming back to the forefront. Circumstances are almost always temporary. Circumstances are always surmountable. You can get past them. Don't allow a circumstance, regardless of what it is, to stop you from making a decision. Once you make the decision, you're going to move that circumstance out of the way. And we talked about this yesterday. When you make a decision, it's an irrevocable committed decision. Remember, I asked you to put those three words down on paper. Make an irrevocable committed decision. I am willing, I am able, and I am doing this. And turn that theory and fantasy into a goal and don't look back. Regardless of circumstance, regardless of the popularity behind the goal, make the decision that propels you forward. Once you've set your goal, once you've set the decision that this is the direction I'm going. Start looking for the outcome because your goals are going to be achievable. But when you hesitate, you lose. So don't hesitate. Step forward. Hold a firm vision in your mind of your goal. 
then everything will begin to elevate and start to move into the view and it come into purview of the things you need for your goal. Have a strong want, have a strong desire. If you have a weak want, you're going to have weak actions. You're going to get weak results. If you look at your current results today and you were to say, I think my results I would call weak. Weak wants equal weak actions equals weak results. So you have to take a look at that. Charles Kettering once said, if you flunk at something 999 times, but succeed one time, you're in. Think about Thomas Edison. He failed 10,000 times, but he made it that one time. He's in. He's our hero. He is one of the greatest inventors ever. Created something for us that we use every day and worldwide that we would never have had if he hadn't pursued his goal and his dream. If you flunk at something 999 times, but you make it one time, you're in. What that means is go for your goal. And if you fail, get up and go. If you fail, get up and go. I don't care if you fail 999 times. The one time you succeed, you've reached your goal. Winning is a decision. It's a mindset that is stronger than any emotion. Don't let your mind be dictated by the emotions of those or others around you. Have conviction in yourself. Make decisions from you, for you, of who you want to be with decision, discipline, the imagination in mind, and an attitude that I can do this. Tie them all together. So have absolute conviction. Move towards your goals. Have the desires. Accept only what you want. Be committed to your goals and dreams. Let the old goal, let the past die. Stop acting out of lack and limitation. Stop allowing that to be in your mind. Let the lack leave you. It's not there. So how do you do it? You just do and you start by making a decision. Make a decision, an irrevocable, committed decision. I love this quote by Bruce Lee, the famous actor and martial artist. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. That's that repetition we talked about. He also says, when you say that something is impossible, you've made it impossible. There's your inner self-talk. If you tell yourself it can't happen, well, guess what? Then it's not going to happen. Defeat is a state of mind. No one is ever defeated until defeat has been accepted as reality. Profound statements. Your goals and decisions are yours. Commit to them. Follow through with them with repetition. If one person can do it, anyone can. If one person can write a check to themselves for $10 million and go realize it, anyone can. Your goal may not be that grandiose. It doesn't have to be. But whatever your goal is, you probably look around and see somebody else that's attained it. If they can, you can. The most important person in your life, absolutely bar none, is the person looking back at you when you look in the mirror. Starts with decisions. Make one today, and let's rewrite a new story starting today. Thank you. And I'm going to throw this back over to Susan to wrap up the day. Thank you, Steve, for that. And I was taking some notes during um, Steve's presentation, and I just want to wrap it up here a little bit and bring some focus on things that I think are really important for us to remember. First of all, I love the Jim Carrey story. He wrote himself the check for 10 million and he wanted to be the first actor to make $10 million for a starring role. And here's the funny thing that I think is just hilarious. The movie that got him the $10 million check for being the starring actor is titled Dumb and Dumber. That was the movie that made him $10 million for his starring role. I just think that's a cute story. And it is, it's a great story from Jim Carrey. We can bring whatever we want, whatever goal that we have in our life, be persistent and we can get there. You know, Steve talked about our infinite self has no boundaries. We can do anything that we want in our life because we are spiritual beings. With an intellect, we can think and we live in a physical body. And spirit, spirit is always for expansion and growth. That's a law of the universe. Look at nature. Everything is expanding and growing. That's the way it is. 
That is our true self, our spirit, expansion and growth. It can be no other way. So don't stifle that. And living in faith or fear, you know, Steve started off with saying faith and fear live in our house at the same time, just in different rooms. And fear, so many of us think it's a negative thing, fear. Fear is actually plays a very important role in our lives. Fear is kind of like a red flag. Fear means you're crossing the boundary of somewhere you've never been before. That's what we need to use it for. Hey, I'm embarking on this new journey. I've never done that. I'm thinking a different way. I've never done that. It's fear's role to alert you of that. Hey, this is new. Hey, be careful. This is new. It's your decision to say, I'm aware it's new and I'm going to move forward. Thank you, fear, for letting me know this is a new endeavor. But learn to walk with fear. Learn to live with fear. Accept it for the positive it brings you. Just keep breaking those boundaries and saying, come along with me, fear. We're moving forward. So I just think that was a really important part. Don't fear fear. Have it walk alongside of you. Decisions. Yeah, they're so important. We've made so many already today, no matter where we are, where we're hearing this. And so many of them are made just by our habitual behavior. We don't realize we're making decisions. Some of those decisions are probably headed you in the wrong direction. Become aware of those and make changes to those decisions, right? Make changes to those habits. You can't change something until you realize it's happening. So be aware of those daily habits, those little things that you can change. But once you change them, they make a huge difference in your life. Just start with one thing today and see where that takes you. And the last thing that I had, Steve talked about the past. And when we say it's never happened before and I can't do this and I failed, what's different this time? The past is history. We need to let it go. Like Steve said, it can go back in the rear view mirror and get smaller and smaller. What it's good for is the lessons that it taught us. Take the lessons and build on them, right? You're gonna have failures when you're heading towards your goal. We all do. Failures are not fatal unless we quit, right? So we have to learn to expect them. And once you've made a decision, it doesn't mean to throw it away, like throw the baby away with the bathwater. No, you make the decision and something doesn't work and there's a small failure. You tweak it. You say, okay, this didn't work just like Edison. Okay, I got to do things a little differently. Doesn't mean you throw it out. Make the decision and stay on the course. You're going to have to pay a price for where you want to go. But it's your choice. Bet on yourself. Always bet on yourself. And you will make it towards that goal. Baby steps, like Steve said, 1%. Remember that every day. 1% better every day will take you where you need to go. So to end today, let's stop with a quote from a great philosopher of our times. Do or do not, there is no try. And for those of you Star Wars fans, that is Yoda in all his wisdom. Start today. Just do it. So that's all we have for you today. Join us tomorrow. We will do a quick recap and then we will go into the Q&A session. If you have any questions at all, write them in the chat or go to visionfrontcoaching.com. You can go to the contact us button. You can write a question there or you can set up a, a time to talk to us if you so desire. Have a great Valentine's Day, whatever you do, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.